I feel like this video is really long overdue. I have been dying to do the alternative black girl tag for ages, but nobody's tagged me. So I decided to just tag myself. <laughs> So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm going to use a website called Dining with Dana as a reference for what questions I'm supposed to be asking myself. So shout out to Dining with Dana because I've been checking out your site. It's really cute. Um, so yeah, let's get started. The first question is how did you know you were different? Well, I actually have like a legit like epiphany moment where this happened. Like, I've kind of been like, I've always been like a fan of rock music. Like, I remember being like five years old and people would ask me like, what kind of music do you like? And I'd be like, oh, you know, I really like Avril Lavigne and I like Green Day and I love the darkness. I was obsessed with the song called A Thing Called Love, right? And um, Marilyn Manson songs and System of a Down and stuff like that. So yeah, when I, when I say that, people be like, oh, you're a little rocker, aren't you? And I was like, yes, I am. So it was like, I, I, it had been acknowledged for a long time, but I was in primary school, which for my American viewers, that pretty much means like elementary school. I was about nine, 10 years old. I was in year five. I was in art class and we were learning how to draw pictures of, of like people's bodies in proportion. So I had like a in proportion outline of a human. I made her a girl. I dressed her up. She had like baggy trousers on with loads of pockets or black obviously uh big new rock boots she was wearing a crop top it had a skull on the front sleeves just like this but this part was fishnet she had a fringe she had black lipstick heavy eyeliner <laughs> so she pretty much looked like how i ended up looking when i got older because i had a fringe for a really long time and little me was just happily drawing this picture and then a boy came over I'm not going to say who he was, but I feel like it's probably a worthy detail to, note it, to like note that he was black because that's the story of my life. So he came over and he looked at it, and he looked at me, and he looked at it, and he looked at me, and he was like, why did you dress her like that? And I was like, I like that style. He was like, would you wear that? And I was like, yeah, I would. And then he said, oh my god, are you a Mosha? And I had no idea what that meant. So I was sitting there like, um, um, I don't know. Cause it sounded like an insult to me. And then he was like, well, would you wear that? And I'm like, I, yes, I would, I would. And he was like, oh, okay, so you're a Mosha. Yasmin's a Mosha, Yasmin's a Mosha. And yeah, so <laughs> I was literally sitting there thinking, oh my God, am I a Mosha? Is that good? <laughs> Is that bad? And I had to go home and ask my mom what a Mosha was. And when I found out what it meant, I was like, I don't see a problem with going in a Mosh pit. Like, what's, what's wrong with that? But yeah, like from that moment on, I was kind of like the, the coconut of my class even more than I already was because people were already calling me that because it was kind of common knowledge that I was a huge, huge, huge Green Day fan. At non-school uniform days, I would come in, I had like this little battle jacket, <laughs> like sleeveless, that patches on it and a skull in the back and I thought I would look so good and then everyone would look at me like, why are you dressed like that? Um... So yeah, that was kind of like, that was the actual moment where I thought, okay, maybe I'm different and maybe it's not a good thing, but me being the non-conformist that I am, it did not stop me from being different. <laughs> Even when I was like, I have no friends, no one likes me, I could just dress different and people would like me, I was still like, screw it, I'm not gonna have any friends. And yeah, I pretty much held that same mentality for my entire life and here I am. That's probably like a really long answer. Okay, so do people judge you? Well, I kind of answered that already, <laughs> but the answer is yes, I'm pretty sure they do. Although they don't make it obvious anymore. Um, as I said, like when I was that age in primary school, people definitely judged me. They thought I was very unblack and the black kids didn't hang out with me. The black boys all made fun of me. I had no friends. I literally didn't play outside because I didn't have anyone to play with, so I didn't want to go outside. But you, the only way you could not be outside at that age was if you're in a library. So I was always in the library, which is why I have a, I had like a weird amount of like insight into Anne Frank because I was always in the library and I joined every club just so I would have an excuse to stay inside and not <laughs> not go outside. So yeah, at that age, people definitely judged me. I think it was kind of the same in secondary school, although I was able to kind of like Obviously none of the black kids hung out with me, but I did have other friends, sort of, who were 
kind of alternative too but I felt like I didn't really fit with them either because whenever we would go out and there would be other alternative kids they were always white so I was like a minority within a minority even though I was around the people that I was supposed to fit with they looked at me like oh my god who's that random black girl and I was just like invisible no one people didn't talk to me people didn't invite me out I was just like an appendage of my white friends so I felt judged even in those situations and then in college you know people would try and insult me by you know just by saying i'm weird or by giving me saying things that kind of sounded like compliments they'd be like oh my god you look like death and i'm like <laughs> thank you yeah like things like that so and then i feel like just like it's subtle now as you get older it's more subtle um People just like, they, people just like won't sit next to you. Like if they had a choice out of everybody that they're gonna sit next to in the lecture hall, it just won't be you. If it's group work, they just won't pick you. Like that's just kind of how it was. And I'm thinking there's nothing wrong with my personality. So it must just be the way I look. That must be the reason why people don't want to sit with me. Even when I tone it down, people still think I'm too edgy. I don't know why. So yeah, judgment's a thing. But to be honest, I get a lot of positive judgment as well. So I can't really complain. <laughs> What's the next question? I'm taking so long to answer these questions. I'm sorry. This video is going to be longer than it should be. Okay, so the next question is, how do you react to negative people? Okay, well, I'm a very apathetic person 90% of the time and to be honest 90% of the time I'm very invisible people do not notice me I could literally be walking around looking really really wild or do something really wild and no one will care <laughs> um, I think it's a good thing because I like to be kind of inconspicuous but like yeah I don't get a lot of negativity even though maybe I should do I don't know so but when I do I just kind of like laugh it off because I find like the, the things that people try and say like, oh my god, it's not Halloween yet. I'm just like, every day is Halloween. What are you talking about? Like, it's not, they're not good insults. So I just want they look like death. I'm like, it's kind of what I'm going for. <laughs> so yeah, it just kind of rolls off my back, especially as like, as some of you probably know, I do modeling. I'm an alternative model. I've been doing it for like four years now. I'm trying to provide some representation for alternative black girls. And in doing that, like, me looking weird is kind of like my trademark. That's why people like me, because I look distinctive. And I've had brands from all over the world want to shoot with me. I've been in magazines. Like, it's, I guess, so much positive reinforcement that it no longer makes a difference. And that's kind of like my way of getting back at any negativity. It's like, you say I'm weird, well, guess what? Being weird is my thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that's kind of like my comeback. <laughs> Next question. Um, what is it? What do your family think? My mom's side of the family are very chill. They don't really care. I'm just like the family golf. I'm like the friendly neighborhood golf. People would be more surprised if they didn't see me in black. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone really cares. Uh, but you know, my dad's side of the family who aren't too nice. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said that on YouTube. But yeah, like I know they all think I'm pretty weird. Um, my dad especially thought I was really weird. He thought that I was like obsessed with death because I wear black so much and he thought that I was probably like on drugs and he assumed that my friends must also be obsessed with death and on drugs even though my friends aren't alternative. They're like country kids so that's really weird. Um, so yeah, the family that I actually care about, they, they don't care. They think I'm quirky. <laughs> so that's fine. How do you remain true to yourself? I'm so bad at this. I feel like I've already answered all these questions. Okay, so how do you remain true to yourself? Um, again, I get a little positive reinforcement, but I've always just been like, I've always been just like a non-conformist. Like, I don't like people that much, so I don't really care what they think um, in terms of like judging how I am. So that's kind of just like how I... I, I, I just never cared even as a kid when I had no friends I didn't care I never felt like I had to change who I was because like I like who I am I don't want to be the same as everybody else you shouldn't want to be exactly the same as everybody else and so yeah I never felt the desire to change because I think I'm pretty cool and yeah <laughs> I'm so bad at this I'm so bad at this um who or what inspires you um, I guess my mom, I found my mom very inspiring. I love her. Um, but I don't know, I'm not really like that inspired by people. 
like I didn't really have idols or anything but something I do find impressive is when people are in a position where they could like lose something and they still continue to stick to their guns and they do what they want for the greater good like that I find that inspiring so anyone who does that you're cool um what does your girlfriend slash boyfriend or spouse think I'm an aromantic asexual girl I'm not about that life and I think I'm supposed to tag somebody else, but you know what? I'm just going to tag every alternative black girl who watches this. Am I doing it wrong? I don't care. Uh, <laughs> so, I hope you guys like that. Pretty sure I did it wrong, but... And the lighting is like right in my eye and it's really annoying. Um, but I hope it doesn't look too bad on this video. Uh, you should totally follow me on Instagram. That's where I talk to people the most. That's why I post most of my modeling related pictures, my updates, my activism, my essays, my videos, everything. It is at the Yasmin Benoit. Thank you very much for watching. Love you guys. Mwah. Got lipstick on my finger. Mwah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>